G'day, I'm Square Eye Jack, and today we begin our expedition to find the Tasmanian Tiger. I know what happened to the last bloke that went looking for them. They say he went mad up there, lost his mind, and never come back. <laughs> You be careful out there. It's a dangerous track. They say he went mad up there, lost his mind and never come back. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, I understand. <laughs> Where the hell am I? It feels like I've been running for weeks. How the hell did I get myself into this mess? <laughs> Tiger blood is the curse of this land. Purification is near. No fear, no slowing, only forever going deeper and deeper. He's on his way now, Ty, and soon he'll be all yours. Are you tired of running yet? <laughs> Stop! Bush Rescue on Game Boy Advance. Ty's presentation and quality has been the one consistent attribute holding all of the previous games together. But now we're on a system that just isn't capable of delivering those fine details at the quality we've come to expect. So, I'm dreading this one. Starting up, the game looks and sounds like time, despite the bit crushing on display. Much like the console version, Bush Rescue starts off with the team defending an attack against the Kurrawong prison, where Boss Cass is in captivity. As you might expect, the game is a side-scroller, much like every other 3D platformer that was ported to Nintendo's Game Boy line. But that's not a bad thing. Crash Bandicoot thrived in this format, for a couple of games anyway, so there shouldn't be a problem here. And to be perfectly honest, I'll take any footwork format after that last abomination we looked at. 
Unfortunately though, Ty is suffering from a severe disability that prevents him from sitting centred on the screen. Much like Croc on Game Boy Color for example, depending the direction you're facing, he sits dead on the border of the screen. I get that this is supposed to assist with our visibility due to the lack in depth perception, and for a Game Boy Color title with less screen real estate, that does make sense. But this is just way too extreme. It almost makes me sick with the constant back and forth motion of the screen. Crash didn't need to do this, so why does Ty? But aside from that, this introductory level is fine. Nothing special really, just a tutorial with a fluffy battle at the end before Cass escapes. The one thing it's missing though, is personality. And that's what I'm saying about system limitations. We're not getting any voice acting, so it kills these characters. Which was the one thing that kept me going through the previous titles. But now that we're out into the game, let's talk about the world of Southern Rivers. We've still got Baramudji to run around in, talk to people and visit stores for items, but as for the actual world area, it's totally gone and in its place, a simple, easy to understand map screen. This is so much better in my opinion. That's something that bogged down the console version tremendously for absolutely no reason. All we did was drive from one mission location to the next with nothing in between, so I'm glad we're cutting the crap here. Occasionally, you might run into a frill on a motorbike and have to play a quick minigame in the truck where you've got to run these guys off the road. Again, it's nothing special, but it helps to break things up and is still easily avoidable if you really can't be bothered. See, this is proof of concept that less is more. I'm already enjoying this game's structure more so than the original console version that this was based off. How crazy is that? And that's the biggest compliment I could ever give any handheld port. As for the actual levels, these are about what you'd expect. Simple and mostly linear, with themes and missions ripped directly from the 3D games. I'd have to say that these graphics are nice and authentic to the Outback theme, and the music again is still fairly good despite the lower quality. It looks and sounds like a tie game. We've still got all the same moves and the same rangs, which, unfortunately, still don't have that much impact on the overall game, but at least we're actually getting to use them this time, and using them as projectiles. However, the game still features a wide variety of different mech suits as well. All the same ones we've had previously for putting out fires, lifting heavy objects, flying around, and just general pounding on enemies. Thankfully, the volume of these segments has been drastically downscaled. These all take place within main levels, but normally serve to access side paths for collectibles rather than being required to beat a stage. Sometimes they are, but they just don't have the same negative effect on the gameplay as they previously have done. Plus, it's a handheld, so I'd expect some shortcuts to be taken to pad the experience a little. But I honestly don't think they're a bad inclusion at all. Much like the driving minigame, they help to break things up. Every few levels will reach a boss fight against all of your favourite foes. I really don't think quality boss fights have ever been Ty's strong point, aside from maybe Buster, and to be perfectly clear, that translates pretty accurately to the portable experience as well. All of these bosses are a bit lame and way too easy. But I really don't think it matters all that much though, they're no worse than before, so that's passable in my book. I'm still just happy to keep opening new parts of the map for more of these levels as they're all pretty fun. Yes, the camera movement does hurt the gameplay, but looking past that, the objectives and structure is fairly enjoyable. Most of these are simply about reaching the end of the level, but other times, they're more like open-ended scavenger hunts. 
I'm not as big on these levels as it can get confusing trying to keep track of where you've already been, but I will say, despite the system limitations, they did manage to hit all of the major plot points of the story and all of the major locations incredibly well for a GBA port. The final gauntlet here has us running through all of the previous boss fights again before finally reaching Boss Cass. And, as you might expect, he's not much trouble at all. I would have liked something a little more challenging to end the game off, but overall, I'm satisfied. We even get to continue our beatdown on Cass during the credits scene, which is awesome. But that's really all there is to say about this game. I firmly stand by my opinion that this game handled the bush rescue structure so much better than the console version. No time wasting driving segments, no pointless missions, and no unnecessary vehicles hogging the spotlight. Sure, this is a very limited game and doesn't have a whole lot going on, that's certainly not good. I would have liked some more difficulty as it's so easy to blast through this thing, and along with the screen movement being a major turn off, the game definitely isn't perfect, but I still think it's worth a go. Bush Rescue on Game Boy Advance gets 4 out of 10. Look, in the grand scheme of things, I'd have to say that this is a somewhat mediocre experience, but when compared to the console versions of Ty 2, and especially Ty 3, there is definitely some fun to be had here. Why did you bring me here? You are here to witness the resurrection of the mighty Tasmanian tiger. Oh, Jesus Christ, here we fucking go. All father seen spirits rest on this sacred ground. Feel with your hands their hearts beat through the earth's soil. I can feel it. So how do we bring them back? What? <laughs> what are you afraid of? I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here for the tiger. But they're all extinct! Wrong! One final tiger still survives. It survives deep within the subconscious. Inside the darkest corner of a person's mind. And the only way to release it is suffering. <laughs> Suffering? Haven't I suffered enough? Knight of the Quinkin? On Game Boy Advance? Well then. Well, what? I don't like your attitude. I bring you all the way out here, and now all of a sudden, you don't want to cooperate. So keep in mind, you forced my hand. <laughs> The spirit of the father scene uh, is coming out of you one way or the other. Uh, <laughs> 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 <sighs> 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 
gross. As if the original Night of the Queenkin wasn't bad enough, now we've got to suffer through the Game Boy Advance version. Once again, to nobody's surprise, this is all looking very familiar. We're sent into the Dreaming to take out the Quinkin, and wouldn't you know it, it's actually not the worst thing ever. Maybe that has something to do with being able to kill these guys with a projectile rang attack? No, it couldn't be that at all. We've got a similar town area again, with all of the same functionality, as well as general level structure. Gameplay is fun and snappy. I'd say we've got more non-linear locations this time around, but the game gives us plenty of direction, thankfully. It even sounds and looks the same too, which is no bad thing. Almost all of the level themes here have been recycled over, which is fine, quicker and easier to produce, I get it. But what's not fine is this hub world. You know, I'm baffled to buggery. How did they manage to make this so much worse so quickly? You saw the hub area in Bush Rescue on Game Boy Advance. We could drive around and pick our levels, unlocking a new part of the map after each boss. But now look at Tie 3. Not a single level in sight. Lengthy, looping roads that take you on the most indirect paths possible. And it takes me a few minutes every time trying to find the next location I'm allowed to visit. It's just far too cumbersome to navigate, especially without a map. Look at this. I've been circling this place in utter confusion looking for the next level and I still can't find it. I even figured out that you can move down the rivers as well, by total accident of course, and I still can't find a single scrap of gameplay anywhere out here. Only when I travel to the absolute top left of the screen, out bloody whoop whoop in the middle of bum fucking nowhere, can I find the hidden entrance to the next level. Yikes. But, as long as the level is fun in the end, then that makes all of the pain worth it. Even death would be less painful than this. Yes, now we've got the addition of the random, completely unnecessary vehicles. An unwelcome inclusion for sure. We've got both the helicopter gameplay from Tai 2, watered down and as boring as ever, along with the gun yip making an appearance for some side-scrolling shooter gameplay. Desperate fucking gameplay, let me tell you. And again, if you walked in on somebody playing this, much like the console version of Tai 3, you wouldn't know what they were playing because it looks nothing like what a Tasmanian Tiger game should look like. Even some of the normal levels are entirely played inside of the various mech suits. I just don't understand it. Yes, you could argue that it's a perfect translation of the actual game, but when the actual game is so horrendously pathetic, whacking that on inferior technology only makes it worse. And that's such a shame, because the GBA Bush Rescue port was actually on the right track for this series, bringing it back to basics and not wasting time with all of this sort of junk. But it's just immediately forgotten about. I actually don't mind the footwork here, and the bosses are honestly a huge improvement. Sure, they've all got their basic patterns, but at least they last longer than 30 seconds and actually feel like a point of progression. But everything else just makes this so depressing to play through. The return of all of these garbage, copy and pasted vehicle segments just destroys this game for me. But even down to some more trivial things, like the map screen. We're given three of these huge, annoying areas to cover. So instead of a full, vibrant landscape, we've got long periods of nothing happening, only to find dead ends that then require backtracking. 
map screens shouldn't be this hard to deal with. And the final gauntlet in this game might just be the worst for Ty yet. Which is an accomplishment, I must say. It's almost like each new game is trying to outdo the previous on having the worst ending ever. First, we've got this boss fight, which is okay. But then we have to play a repeat of a previous boss in the flying section. Like we really couldn't think of anything else to have here because we haven't got a single original concept left. Then for the main portion of this level is just running through waves of enemies. Which may sound familiar, but to the console version's credit, at least it didn't force us to stop and fight all of the other bosses again and fight the same boss multiple times, each with a new colour swap. This goes on for ages and it really does suck the life out of you before the final battle against the Quinn King. Much to my surprise, I had some trouble with this guy at first, and I really don't think the fight is all that bad. But having said that, defeating him just doesn't feel rewarding, as we're given such little room to avoid his attacks, so taking him out feels more reliant on a lucky pattern than any actual skill. The game ends, and Fluffy is of course killed in action. But we don't actually get to see that here, and the game doesn't directly say it either. Fluffy's fucking dead! Maybe spend a little more time on that than just a single vague mess of pixels. And that's it. Thank Christ. Night of the Quinkin was easily one of the most boring, repetitive, and desperate excuses for a video game I think I've ever seen, given the potential this series showcased in its early days. Chrome the cheeky cunts thought they were sitting on the next Crash Bandicoot, and at first, I believed them. But things quickly went under. Down under, if you will, and got worse and worse with each game. With a total lack of focus, the Tasmanian Tiger was extinct once again. But then you go and cram that experience into a Game Boy Advance port, and wow. Fuck you for subjecting people to this nauseating catastrophe. Night of the Quinkin on GBA gets 3 out of 10. The final days of the last surviving thylacine were filled with much suffering. A perfect analogy to describe playing Knight of the Quinkin. The final game from Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Ah! Ah! Only now can we all understand ah! Ah! what it feels like. <laughs> To finally, ah, ah, to finally die. Holy shit! I guess the boomerang is good for close range attacks after all! Well, like I keep saying, the boomerangs in this series are pretty worthless. Ah! You don't think that you can run away, do you? You never know where I might show up next. Get him! Get him! 
old guy put a spell on me or something. Oh, I don't even know what's real anymore. to find a Tasmanian tiger. Bow, 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 bow. 